so uh, today our uh, learning objective is we want to know about ECG that is electrocardiogram second point that we as I told you previously when we will read ECG we will try to correlate it with two things one is uh, our cardiac action potential second thing we want to correlate with our Vigors diagram where we have seen different phases of cardiac cycles different phases of cardiac cycles and where we actually uh, uh, we have seen that where uh, the first heart sound is happening where the second heart sound is happening and we correlated the uh, left ventricular pressure and volume with different phases of cardiac cycle now it is a time we will see this how cardiac cycle is adjusted with the ecg so first is what is ecg ECG is electrocardiogram we can say that it is the graphical it is we can say that it is the graphical representation of electrical activity trickle activity of heart so electrical activity of heart so from our previous uh, lessons we know about the electrical activity of heart we have two types of um, cells in the heart one is a, a pacemaker cell they have a different kind of electrical activity and we have the working myocardial cells which have the different type of uh, electrical activity now the thing is that we want to know uh, few basic points about this electrical activity again so first thing is that suppose this is a myocardial cell and we, this is this we already know this is a myocardial cell number one suppose this is myocardial cell number two and three and we all know what is the rest, at the resting state what is the resting membrane potential of this cell number one it is minus 90 millivolt okay so now you have applied one some kind of stimulation so from 90 minus 90 millivolt it will go more towards a uh, ne less negative value say it will go to minus 70 at that point there will be opening of very fast sodium channel and the there will be steep rise of this electrical activity sodium entry will be there so after certain period this sodium channels are very short lasting so when they will be closed there will be opening of some potassium channels through which the potassium will try to go out and the resting membrane potential will come down so initial phase is phase 0 then it is phase 1 now at this point another channel will be opened up these are the slow pot calcium channel through which the calcium will come in so some potassium positively charged ion it is going out and calcium is com coming in when they will balance each other so we will get a plateau phase but after certain period this calcium channels will be closed only potassium channels will remain open so that the repolarization process will take place so this much we know one extra point I want to add is that the speciality of this myocardial cells, uh, cells are they are connected with each other by gap junction. So these are there are some electrical windows which are connecting these cells. So whenever there is some kind of electrical activity positively charged sodium ion is coming in this sodium will automatically will be transferred to the next cell and here this end, end uh, sodium will 
help the action potential resting membrane potential to reach the firing potential and again an action potential will take place and this sodium will also be transported to next cell so there will be very fast conduction through of the electrical signaling through this electrical windows this is a very important point now we want to record these electrical uh, signaling this is movement of ions via ecg which is nothing but the galvanometer which is nothing but a galvanometer so how exactly it is the ecg uh, is acting as a galvanometer and trying to record the signal uh, electrical activity in the heart we will try to see this in some phases we we, we first we need to understand few basic points so suppose this is uh, this is your heart this is your atrium this is your ventricle and uh, they in between this atrium and ventricle there is a fibrous tissue present and this fibrous tissue is denoted as fibrous annulus and this fibrous annulus is a non-conductor and we also know that the actually the electrical signaling will start from the SA node which is located at the upper left part of the heart from it it will move to the AV node which is present at the junction of this atrium and ventricle one point is important the whole in uh, interval between atrium and ventricle it is separated by fibrous annulus which is non-conductor only electrical window through which the electrical signal will pass from the atrium to the ventricle is this AV node from the AV node we know the bundle of his light and left bundle they will go and they will communicate with the Purkinje fiber and in this way there will be uh, total distribution uniform distribution of electrical signaling in the heart now if I connect the galvanometer which is nothing but an ECG ECG machine with the heart what types of recording it will take so for it I want to take one piece of myocardium say this is my piece of myocardium I have dissected it I am taking it out and this is my piece of small piece of myocardium it is present here and uh, and we know that there are several uh, cells are present in this piece of myocardium so many myocardial cells they are connected with each other by via cap junction so my first condition is at the resting state we know that in the resting state all the heart cells they are intracellularly negative and is there any current flow no there is no current flow no movement of iron is taking place at this resting state uh, okay so now if i want to connect one galvanometer suppose say this is my galvanometer galvanometer has got one positive end it has got one negative end suppose this is a a point and this is a b point and there is a needle when there is no current flow so what will be the recording of this galvanometer so nothing so this galvanometer will be at zero position so this state is my resting state where the needle of the galvanometer needle is placed at zero now this is my stage number one okay now come to step number two step number two I am again taking this part of the myocardial tissue consisting of myocardial cell connected by cap junction and this is connected with a galvanometer like this one end of it 
end is positive end is connected here another is a negative end is connected here this point is a this point is b and needle is at the zero position now what we will do we will we are giving some kind of stimulation here so already it is negative so when i am giving stimulation that means i am causing the depolarization okay and is depolarization will try to move from point a to point b so what we are doing so we are first it is there was rmp i am given a kind of stimulation this stimulation will generate depolarization so depolarization of different cells so many cells they will generate a depolarizing wave so it will generate a depolarizing wave so wave when a kind of wave ionic wave is moving on so it will generate an electro magnetic force and whenever we are talking about force we must define the force in terms of vector we must define the force in terms of vector so what is vector vector must have a value or say this is a you must have a length of the vector or value absolute value that will indicate the amount of force force amount in addition to that it should have a direction okay so we have so many so many vectors here when we are adding it when they will be added so we are getting a vector like this here it is a as it is a depolarizing wave so a positive depolarizing wave the length of this vector will denote how much strength or force is it is generating uh, the electromagnetic force it is generating and the direction of it we can see that the positively charged ion positively charged depolarizing wave is moving towards a positive electrode so what can be the deflection of this galvanometer suppose i am showing the galvanometer here so initially the needle was at zero suppose this is plus 10 this side is plus 20 this is minus 10 this is minus 20 like this so what should be the deflection of this galvanometer so when a positively charged wave or depolarizing wave is moving towards a positively charged electrode the deflection will be positive so this is our second assumption so when a positively charged wave is moving towards a positive electrode it will cause a positive deflection okay now come to the third assumption here actually i was uh, say here i have taken a myocardial cell which is from atrium and now i am taking a myocardial cell from the ventricle okay so ventricular cell from the left ventricle especially they are much more thicker than the atrial cell so now I suppose a condition where I am having a myocardial cell but the thickness of the cell is greater okay the rest of the thing is so no more number of myocardial cells will be there more number of myocardial cells rest is the same so it is connected with a galvanometer the positive end is connected here the negative end is connected here this is a point this is b point and you have given a stimulus from this end will there be any change in the deflection 
of the galvanometer so what will be the vector here as the thickness of myocardium it is more so the force the electromagnetic force will be more so the length of the vector if it is if it is showing the force of um, the electromagnetic field then the length will be more here and the direction what about the direction direction is the same because the same electro electrically positive charge is moving to the positive real electrode so direction is this but the galvanometer will show a deflection of greater amount say it is plus 10 it is plus 20 it is plus 30 as we are taking a much thicker tissue so the electromagnetic force the force of the vector the length of the vector will be more so deflection will be more otherwise the direction of it is the same and the positive direction okay so this is another condition we can say now let's see another condition where again we are taking uh, say we are taking uh, an, an atrial myocardium that is a small piece of myocardium uh, and uh, uh, we are connecting it again with a galvanometer the positive end of it is this the negative end of this is this this is point a this is point b now i have given stimulation not at the point A, I have stimulated it from point B. So, the positively charged ion, they are now moving from point B towards point A. Now, what should be the vector? And what should be the deflection of the galvanometer needle? So, here everything is same the length the electromotive force it was just like uh, condition 2 the length of the uh, vector is the same but what about the direction here we can say a positively charged electrical wave it is moving away from the positive electrode so direction will be in the opposite direction so Instead of going to the positive side, it will be deflected in the negative side. So, this is condition number 4. So, we came to know at the resting state, when there is no current flow, there will be no deflection. It will be at the 0 position. So, when the current is moving from positive, from uh, positive current is moving towards a positive electrode, then there will be a positive deflection. And the direct, the force, electromotive force, if it is more, then the length of the vector of the will be more. And when a negatively charged ion, make flow, is moving When a positively charged ion, it is moving away from the positive charge, so deflection will be on the opposite direction. Now come to condition number 5. Up till now, we are considering about the wave of depolarization. But we know when the depolarization is over, there will be a phase of repolarization. So, suppose the depolarization is done from A to point B or every point is positive. Now, the repolarization starts. Now, the repolarization starts. So, repolarization will be there. The condition is the same. Here, the galvanometer is connected. The positive end here that is a point B and the negative end is here that is point A okay now here one point is important that is the 
area or point which is depolarized last will be repolarized first this is this is why it will happen that we'll discuss later but for uh, this time point you take it from me so the last point that was depolarized was point b so the repolarization will start from point b repolarization 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 means the intracellular part now will become negative so a negative wave so now a negative wave is moving so so the direction of vector will be from point a to point b okay and the charge that is carrying by this vector is a negative charge and what should be the deflection of the galvanometer now the negatively charged ion when it is moving towards a negative electrode again it will give a positive deflection so what are the conditions we have seen first at the resting state no deflection second when uh, a positively charged elect uh, depolarization of wave moving towards a positive electrode there will be a positive deflection and deflection will be more if the thickness or the length of the vector is more okay now when i am stimulating the other end and a depolarizing wave positive wave it is moving away from the positive electron the deflection will be negative deflection okay and when the repolarization wave is moving a negatively charged uh, wave is moving towards negative electrode again there will be a positive deflection okay so when we are discussing about the vector i told you that we are talking about the value or amount of force that vector is carrying and second point what should be the director of the vector direction of the vector another point that is important is the speed of the vector that is also important so how this speed of the vector is affecting the electrical activity in the heart say this is this is 1 atrial tissue so we know the myocardial cells are present here so these myocardial cells they are connected via gap junctions so they will carry the thing here 